So let's talk about tools. So first thing we need to talk about is grout removal. And there are many ways you can approach removing the grout. One way is to use a locking blade Stanley knife and you can run the blade down the side of the grout lines. Okay, you'll need a good quality Stanley knife with a locking blade and a whole bunch of new blades. So that's one method. Another method is to use one of these, if you're only doing a small area, you can use one of these grout removal saws. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. Um, the replacement blades come in a two pack, they're like three or four dollars. You can buy this at Home Depot. Um, there's another version of this available at Floors and Decor, made by other companies. You can also buy one on Amazon, I'll put a link in the description below. But um, this, this is a good system if you're only tackling one tile um, or just a short grout run, because obviously it's manual. So that's another system. The next step up from that is to use a Sawzall. This is a cheap Harbor Freight one. Um, and this tool here is called, I don't know if it's going to come up on the screen, Grout Grabber. Okay. Now, what's cool about this tool is it uses the same blades as this so that's what those replacement blades look like and this is a grout grabber out of the tool I normally have two of these just because I do this quite a bit and the nice thing about the grout grabber is you can remove the screws and you can actually double stack or triple stack the blades to match the grout line that you're working on right so this is a good tool. Um, I like this because it's relatively low dust. It doesn't kick up a whole bunch of dust when you're working. I also like the fact that these blades are very cheap. Um, and I'll demonstrate using that tool here in a little bit. Also a pro tip is install the blade upside down. So this is the reciprocating saw, saws all in the normal position. If you install this grout grabber upside down, it allows you to get the tool much flatter against the surface of the tile. Otherwise you're going in like this and it bounces. And then you'll also want to use this on a variable speed trigger um, you use it on low speed with all grout removal slowly wins the race if you go full speed with these blades on grout you just burn the blade up and you'll just go through blades like crazy so nice slow steady reciprocating action let me plug it in I'll show you Okay, so here we go. So you don't want to go because that'll smoke that blade in about 10 seconds. So you just want to go nice and steady. Okay, and I'll demonstrate that later on the job. So that works very well. The next system that works very well is to get a multi-tool. I don't have to get this one. All the big brands make them. You can get them corded or cordless. And then these are carbide blades made by DeWalt. And I get these on Amazon. I found the cheapest price is on Amazon. You can buy them in the store, but in the store they're like $30 on Amazon. They're half the price. So you'll see this one here is wavy 
and that's for wider grout lines. And this one here is flat, and that's for narrower grout lines. And it's the same principle. You set your multi-tool speed on the lowest speed possible, and you remove the grout. Very effective. The blades are slightly more expensive and it does tend to create a little bit of dust. So those are the cons of using this. What's good about these blades is using these edges here, you can get right into the edge of the grout line, the end of the grout line, especially if you're going up against a wall, right? So this is a good tool, but again, the, the limitations are expensive blade, and creates dust. And then finally, the fastest way is to get a tile cutting blade. I don't know if you can see the little sparkly diamonds in it. Get one of these and you can use this to very, very quickly remove grout. Now, there are a couple of caveats with using this system. One is the fact that there's only one speed and that's wide open. The other danger is because this blade is designed to cut tile, if you go off track, you will cut the tile so you have to be very careful using it. And the third problem with using this is it kicks up one heck of a lot of dust. So this is great if you're working outdoors, maybe you've got a um, patio or a porch or something like that that has tile and you're removing um, the grout from that. You can set up a fan and uh, blow the dust away. But if you're doing this indoors, um, you've got a couple of options. One is to get a really good vacuum cleaner. I'm gonna talk about that here in a minute. Um, the other option is to wet the grout down and use it wet. However, just be aware that it's going to fling um, slurry. So just be mindful of that and protect whatever your, you know, whatever surrounding, if you've got cabinets or something like that, or other floors, walls, whatever. You may want to protect that with plastic, but very, very effective, very fast. And if you're doing a lot of grout, um, I would sheet off the room and uh, use this tool. Typically when I just do grout replacements, this really is my go-to tool um, just because the blades are cheap and it's effective and you're only trying to remove about an eighth of an inch of grout just to get the new grout in. Um, I like the fact that well, I don't know how to demonstrate it, but you do it this way. If this is the grout line, you can run the tool at a slight angle and it'll do a great job of cleaning out both sides of the tile as you work down. And I find that pulling the tool towards you um, works better than trying to push it forwards. So that's grout removal. Now, no matter what method you use, you're going to need to have a vacuum cleaner. Now, even though I do do this fairly often, it's still not often enough to invest in a true HEPA vacuum cleaner. Um, so this is what I use. It's just a micro shop vac. And you can get replacement bags for these, obviously. So you're all familiar with the standard shop back bag. And this is just a knockoff brand, right? Just a paper filter bag. Works well for, you know, coarse debris. Um, if you're picking up chunks of stuff, uh, coarse sawdust, right? Now, even though it says on the bag that it will capture small particles, it will not stop drywall dust or 
grout, uh, grout dust from the grout removal, you need to get a HEPA vacuum cleaner or I've been using these shop back bags and unlike that other one these have five layers of filtration and they're soft and I've actually found these to be very very good the weak point is the seal where the hose goes into the bag but for the most part this works really well at vacuuming up very fine dust without just blowing it all back into the room. Um, so again, if you're doing a large area, you're better off investing in a HEPA vac. Typically all I do is I'm regrouting uh, single room floors or I'm replacing tiles. Um, so it wasn't justifiable in my mind to use or to spend the money on an expensive vacuum cleaner. I buy these. Um, for me, they last a couple of years and I just toss them. Um, it's not worth investing hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Um, also, key to note, I'm self-employed, so um, there are silicate um, OSHA regulations surrounding airborne cement dust. And obviously, if you're a contractor, you'll have to abide by those. But... Um, this vacuum's worked pretty good. And like I said, I just buy a new one. So, reasonably dust free in a filter. And this is that cloth bag. And it's fairly full. As you can see. So I've had good success with this and it's an inexpensive way of converting your regular vacuum cleaner into a vacuum that will handle very fine particles such as sheetrock or drywall dust, grout dust. especially unsanded grout if you're doing that in a shower um, you're definitely going to want to have a filter bag that will deal with that very fine dust and then finally if you're doing tile replacement which is what I'm going to be doing later today and I'm going to take you on that job and show you. Um, once you have the tile removed from the floor, you're going to have to deal with a thin set. And this tool is a rasp, carbide rasp, and it works really good on the multi tool and it, it'll basically abrade down the thin set um, so you can get it cleaned up back to the concrete for putting in the new thin set and setting the new tile. Which brings me to tile removal, and again, I'll demonstrate this on the job, but for tile removal, you're going to need a good little two pound sledge and a good cold chisel. And if you notice on the edge of this, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but I keep that with a file just dressed. You don't want it razor sharp, you're not trying to peel vegetables, but you do want to have it reasonably sharp because that's definitely going to help you get up under the tile. So a good heavy two pound, and I found a two pound works just great. So that's that. And for detail work, you're going to want to have, I just use this tiny little Pittsburgh hammer from Harbor Freight just because it fits in my tool bag nicely. And a seven in one plumber's tool, five in one, whatever people call them. If you get a new one, this corner will be sharp and pointed. As you can see, mine's pretty worn. But you want to get a good one that's got a metal metal end so you can give it some. And then this is a good tool to use for scraping thin set, uh, chipping out the grout that's stuck to the adjacent tiles. And I'll show you all of that in use. 
So that's pretty much it. So if you're going to do a DIY tile replacement, um, any one of these options is, in my opinion, the most effective way to get um, grout out of a floor tile. And like I said, when I'm on the job later today, I'll bring you along and uh, show you the different methods in action. So here's the job. We have three cracked tiles. Fairly typical, I suspect it's a slab settlement crack that's transferred through the tile. But the key thing to note is customer has some spare tiles. If you don't have matching tiles left from the original installation, good luck finding replacements. So my advice is anytime you have a tile job done, make sure you have an extra couple of boxes of tile in case you need to do a repair like this. Okay, so before we begin, PPE, you're going to want some good gloves and you want some eye protection. And when you start kicking up dust, you want to wear a face mask. Now I'm not going to wear one because I'm going to be doing narration while I'm doing the video. But the key obviously is we want to get this tile out without damaging any of the adjacent tiles. So the first step is a nice sharp knife. And we're going to go along the grout line on the side of the grout line that's adjacent to the tile we want to keep. So we're trying to encourage this grout line to crack away from this tile without affecting that tile. So you're just trying to score score that grout line. And I'm going to repeat that all the way around the outer edge the three tiles. Another close up, just scoring the line close to the tile that you're keeping. This is why you're going to need lots of blades. Okay, so obviously the last thing you want is to chip an adjacent tile, so the way to eliminate that from happening or reduce the risk is to get as much of this grout out as you can before you start to chip these tiles out. So first tool I'm going to use is the grout grabber. I'm going to demonstrate that. Notice I'm twisting the tool, I'm going to exaggerate it here, but I'm twisting the tool slightly so that the blade will rub both sides of the tile. And you'll see why that is my preferred method. Now, let me set up 
the other system. So I don't know if you know this, but the amount of dust being thrown into the air is minimal. So the next one we're going to use is the oscillating multi-tool. So we move up to the grout line here. And I'll demonstrate this tool. Again, I've got it on the lowest speed setting possible. Actually, let me flip the blade so I can use it in the other direction so you can see it in action. Again, it's a very effective method, but I don't know if you noticed there was some dust getting thrown up in the air. So I'm not going to use the angle grinder in this bathroom, but um, it's even quicker, but it makes a heck of a mess. Key with the grout grabber is on the end frame. This is started on the ground slowly. To a limitation of this tool that is how long it is so I'm running into the cabinet here um, it's no problem in this situation because I can just switch directions but that is a limitation of this system is the length of the tool I want to get the uh, there's a DeWalt maker single-handed um, battery powered one that's much shorter and I'm going to get one of those for doing jobs like this but what I have to do in this case is just flip the tool around and come back the other direction. You just have to be careful because if you do bounce the tool out and it hits the tile you can scratch it. And it's also possible to chip the edge of the tile. And again, we don't care about this one, but we do care about this one. So just be careful. Take your time. 
let the tool do the work and it's as easy as that so now I'm going to just vacuum all this up and we'll take a look at it I find a soft brittle bristle brush works great to get everything swept into a pile ready to vacuum Said I'd normally be wearing a dust mask if it wasn't for the fact that I'm narrating this video. So as you can see this dust is very very fine and so a regular shop back bag will not do the job. So let's try the one that I was showing you earlier. I'm trying to set the exhaust in focus. Let me do it this way around. And you'll see that there's very, very little dust coming out, even when we hit this big pile. Can you can see that. Yes. see so we cleared the grout against the tile that we're trying to keep okay now we're ready to start chipping the tile out okay so for this step we're going to be using hammer and chisel. Now, don't be tempted to go in here and try to approach the tile that way because you will destroy this edge of the tile you're trying to keep. So the correct way is to attack the tile in the center and work your way out to the joints that we've just cut off, okay? So, if you have a crack that you can start with, start chipping away at that and uh, let's see what happens. And all you're trying to do is just get it started. Small chips will fly. And I believe this one is going to be one of the ones that just chips out in tiny little pieces. See now why eye protection is important.
Yeah, the change in the sound. Absolute best case scenario. I'm clean on this joint here. Thin sets minimal. And now we have an exposed edge. We can go this way and get these tiles out. Just be careful with the corners. As you can tell, I'm really not wailing on it. I'm just tapping. And that one hit me right in the face, so. Eye protection, people. Right here, we're adjacent to the next tile that's coming out, so we don't care about that. Okay, I'm going to carry on and hopefully you'll get lucky and you'll get large pieces out. mindful of the fact that as we're moving this way we're approaching the edge we're trying to save Beautiful. So as you hear that change in sound, you know the tiles beginning to come loose. And then you just soften the blows.
beautiful. All right, mission accomplished. Get all the tile out with no damage. That is the goal. So let me go get a trash bucket and we'll clean all this up. And then we'll get some of this thin set out and get on to the next step. So the next step is going to be to clean up around the edges here. Okay, try to get some of this stuff off. And again, this is where you just be real careful. Just tapping really, really gently. The grout will come away from the tile pretty easily. And we're going to be color sealing the rest of the grout in this bathroom, so it's not super critical. Really, as long as the top edge is clean. Set. It's probably just gonna pop off just like that. So that's one way to do it, especially when it's slightly thicker, like here. The other way is to use the multi tool, so let me set that up. Before I do that, I did want to show you that you can use the uh, angle grinder, but it is messy, so I'm going to run it with the vacuum cleaner. It works and it's fast, but it does make a lot of dust. So let me go get the uh, blade for the multi-tool and I'll be right back. So this is that carbide blade for the multi-tool. And I'm gonna do this little area here. spots down because we're going to be installing tile again so what's nice about that blade is it does a real nice job of cleaning up the edges and getting into the corners to give you a top down view see how clean that is So, finish chipping out the rest of that. So 
Sometimes if you've got a ball hammer, you can break it up. Just be careful you don't miss. Just keeps going. See that scar there from the grinder? They say it's fast, but boy, is it aggressive. Now, if you have one of those SDS rotary hammers, this would be a great time to break it out. Every time I do one of these jobs, I tell myself I'm going to buy one, but. Experience that you really want to make sure you've got your corners clear because otherwise what you end up with is you set the new tire and then it'll wobble and one corner will be lifted up and the rest I'm going to do Grinder, I think. Not the grinder, the multi tool. Some dust is inevitable. So let me clean all this up and I'll be back. Alright. Now we're ready to play with some tile. Okay, so we set the tile in. Yeah, it could be the floor is uneven, but I'm going to take out any little high spots. Taking the time. Oh, 
dog. We're not here to grind concrete floors, so. I mean, it's better than it was. That one seems high there. Sitting on that little piece. You want to take your time. Certainly want to dry fit them before you go mix up the thin set. Yeah, let me go get my spirit level and see what's going on. Okay, so when you're fixing floors, you're working with what the original installation was, and you saw we took the thin set down to the slab but with the tile in there and running that across so there is a minimal amount of grout I mean thin set that's going to be able to go underneath here's a little better but we're still we're looking at a sixteenth which is nowhere near sufficient, but it is what it is. So, let's go mix up some thin set. These tiles stuck down. So the thin set I use is made by MAPE. It is their large format rapid set. Um, you can also buy custom make it that you can buy at Home Depot. But theirs is a dark gray color. I typically prefer the white just because if you use the dark gray and then you use a light colored grout, it can transfer. So I'm gonna mix up some of that. I've already got some water in my bucket. Um, I'm going to mix up a nice tight batch and let me do that and I'll be right back. So I've got a nice tight batch. Okay. Just going to stick down some tile. Okay. Extremely lightly back butt of the tile.
thing we need to do. So you wanna wet this surface. in the thin set. I'm not trying to soak it, I'm just trying to make it so it's not bone dry so the thin set will adhere. Typical. Typically, you have a good eighth or quarter of an inch to work with. So I'm just trying to get an even coat. said got very little space to work with so I'm going to use a quarter inch trial
the goal is just to have collapsible ridges and obviously good adhesion one Requirements for a floor tile is 90% coverage. I think that was what the problem was with it in the first place because it wasn't stuck down very well. Okay, tile number two. the hammer you can use the rubber handle Clean out the edges so that the thin set doesn't squish up. Also, the grout lines too much.
beautiful. And I'm just going to take a little bit of time and fiddle the route lines to where they look nice. I think that was the one that we Now this rapid set will cure in about four hours. You can grout as soon as four hours. I'm actually going to be coming back tomorrow to finish the rest of this job, so I'm just going to let this cure overnight. Take an extra minute. So here we go. Tiles are all in. They're pretty flush with the floor. At least as best as I can do. So actually I had some other things to do here at this job and it's cured, they're ready to go. That rapid set stuff is awesome. So now we're going to put the grout in. And for that I'm just using this pre-mixed. I use all different kinds, I just happen to have this one on hand. And then uh, sandstone is the colour we're going to colour seal. The rest of the floor too. Alright. Trying to pack that grout in nice and deep. Make sure it gets all the way down to the sub floor below.
So it isn't how to grow up video. There's a thousand of those on YouTube. Small jobs, I like the free mixed. You can use a sponge or whatever you like. I'm just going to get the initial. freaking out right now I'm in Florida it is hot the art sets super quick if you don't get on it pretty much straight away especially the pre-made pre-mixed stuff you will lose the fight joints once that started to cure I just wanted to make sure it didn't go off on the tile okay and again I'm in Florida even though it's December hot and humid down here where it goes off real quick so last wipe down and we're done and actually we are coming back tomorrow because Colour sealing the rest of the floor to match. So I'll show you what it looks like tomorrow. And this is the floor the next day. with the three tiles so that's it thanks for watching